So let's talk about some basic formulas in Excel that get used often. Now, if you wanna follow along with this video, a link to the sample file is in the description. Now, before we jump in, let's just make sure we understand our data first. So in this worksheet, the sales worksheet, we see orders for various products. And it tells us an order number, a product ID, the quantity that was purchased of those products, and the total spent on those items. And then a customer ID to tell us what customer ordered those things. So one of the simple things that we can do, simple formulas, is to just add and subtract, multiply and divide. So what I'm gonna do in this cell on the right is say equals, and maybe I want to sum or add together two separate quantities, maybe the first two here. I can select the first one and then use plus and then select the next one. And so I can add those two together. I could also subtract those or I could multiply them using an asterisk or I could divide them using a slash. And you could add more than just two cells by just continuing to use pluses and minuses and so on. But there's a more efficient way to do that is the sum, which we'll talk about in just a second. Okay, with an average, we're averaging a column or a range, a set of numbers here. And so I'm gonna say equals average. And maybe I wanna average the entire quantity column. If I wanted to average an entire column, I just select in this case, D up above, and that would select the entire column for me. I can just close it with the ending parenthesis, hit enter, and that would give me the average quantity for that entire column. But maybe I don't wanna do the whole column, maybe I just want a small subset. And so within those parentheses, I could select just a few and average those. Or if I wanted a few cells that were sort of far apart from each other, I could select one cell, use a comma, select another, use a comma again, and then maybe select a range. And so there's a few different ways to select the range that you want. But let's just for now, let's sum the entire column by just clicking on D up above in this case, and it's gonna average all the quantities for me. Okay, the next thing I may, I may wanna do is sum. So sum up numeric values. And so we'll say equals sum, and maybe we wanna sum the item totals, the amount spent on these products. So I'm gonna say sum, and then I'm gonna select the entire column. And it looks like the total amount spent on these products was just under $2 million. And again, I could adjust this if I want to select a smaller range or to select individual cells and separate them using commas, okay? But for now, let's go back and sum the entire item total column just by clicking E up above. Now the next thing I could do is sum those sales, those item totals, if certain conditions are met. That's what a sum if is. So maybe I only want to sum the item totals for these products, blue polka dot wrap. It's the first one that you see. So what I could do is say equals sum if, and when I open it up, notice right below the formula, you're gonna see just some tips that may help. And sometimes you can click on the links to give you more information. And so with some if, what I'm gonna say is the range I wanna look at is the product description. So I'm just gonna select the entire column, the entire product description column. I'm gonna use a comma and I've gotta give it some criteria. So in quotations, I'm gonna say blue polka dot wrap. And I wanna spell it just like it's shown on the left-hand side there. I'm gonna use another comma and then I say, if that condition is met, sum the item total column or whatever row is relevant. So it's only gonna sum the item totals when it sees on the left-hand side, blue polka dot wrap. Sum only if this condition is met. Okay, so it looks like of the item totals up above, $692 worth was for blue polka dot wrap, whatever that is. Now, another way to do sum if is to say, I'm gonna erase this, is to say sum these numeric values only when they're greater than 20 or something like that. Okay, so what I can do is go back and write out sum if, and I could say, look at this item total range and say greater than 20, okay? That's gonna be the criteria. 
I'm going to add another comma here. And if it's greater than 20, then sum up those item totals. So I'm actually selecting the item total twice in this case because the condition is in the same column. So only sum it when it's greater than 20. So of all the sales, which we saw up above, almost 2 million, if you look down below in that sum if cell, it's telling us the sales that are coming when the order or the item total was greater than 20. So sum if certain conditions are met. Now, instead of summing numeric values, there may be cases where we want to count the number of cells that have information in them. And that's where count and count A can come in. So let's type out count. And when it counts the number of cells with count, it's going to count just numeric values. Okay, so let's use an example here. So maybe I want to count what's in the product ID column. So I'm going to select the entire column, but as a reminder, you can select a smaller subset. And I'll close it there. And it looks like there's 80,268 cells in this column, column C, that are numeric values. Now with count, it's going to exclude the product ID, this title up above, but it looks like it's also going to exclude product IDs that have letters in them. Because Excel doesn't realize that's a number because it's got a, a letter in it too. So what we can do, if we want to find or count cells that have any information of it, regardless of whether it is a number or not, we can use count A. Count A can help with that. So if we select column C again when we use this count A function, it's going to give us a larger number. It's going to include the header row, product ID, but also all the product IDs that have a letter inside of them. Now, one thing I wanted to show you here, just to illustrate this, is let's go back to the count formula. And remember, it's just counting when there's numeric values. One good way to illustrate this is if I try to count the product description column, it should come up as zero because there are no cells in this range that have numbers. They're all text-based descriptions of the product. And so there we go, we have zero that comes up in this case. I have nothing there. So that's count and count A. Now let's talk about count if. It's kind of like sum if, but you're obviously not summing anything, you're just counting cells if a certain condition is met. Okay, so let's try this. Let's try to count the number of cells that have blue polka dot wrap in them. And so we wanna look at this product description column and just count the number of cells with blue polka dot wrap. Okay, so I'm going to say equals count if, and the range is going to be column B, and the criteria is going to be blue polka dot wrap. And I want to make sure I put those in quotations. And so it looks like there's 54 cells in that column that have blue polka dot wrap inside of them. So 54 orders include blue polka dot wrap, essentially. All right, now that we've covered some of those basics, let's try a few different formulas, but instead of putting them on the right-hand side here, we're going to put them inside the table itself. Okay, so with the if statement, we'll put that in the table, and to illustrate it, what we're going to do is populate this sales category column. So if the item total to the left of it is greater than 30, it's going to be in the high sales category. If it's less than or equal to 30, it's going to be in the low sales category. So what we're going to do is in cell F2, we're going to say if, and the logical test, what we're testing, is to see if the cell on the left is greater than 30. That's what we're testing. If that's true, if that is true, what we're going to say is this is a high sales category. And then we'll use a comma. And if that's not true, so if it's less than or equal to 30, we're going to say it's in the low sales category. Okay. okay, let's see what this looks like. Okay, so because this item total on the left-hand side is less than or equal to 30, we put it in the low sales category. Now, the way to populate all of this column now is to go to the bottom right corner of the cell. And we'll see this plus icon up here. And then we double-click and it's going to populate everything below it. That's the if statement. Now let's go to the other worksheet, and we're going to talk about concat, or the concatenate statement. So concatenate allows you to combine data from multiple cells into the same one. 
So let's say in this customer's worksheet, we have the first name and the last name. We want to combine them into a full name in one cell. Maybe there's some reason we want to do that. And so what we're going to do is say equals concat for concatenate. And then we're going to select B2, the first name, and then C2, the last name, and then close it. And let's see what the result is here. Okay, so it gives us Karen Parks, but the problem is there's not a space between the first and last name. So the way to fix that is to add a comma in the middle here, and then in those in between those two middle commas, to actually use quotations, and those quotations to have a space inside of them. We want those quotations to have a space inside of them. Now if we hit enter, we see Karen Parks, the full name, but with a space in between the first and the last. Now again, the way to drag and drop these all the way down is to go to the bottom right corner of the cell and double click. And then we'll see it populated all the way down for us. Okay, that's concatenate. Now with the final formula we're gonna look at is what's called the VLOOKUP. Now this requires a little bit more work, but if you want more practice on VLOOKUPs, I've got a video on that too. So with the VLOOKUP, what it allows you to do is to take data from one worksheet and to transfer it over to another. So in this case, maybe what we want to do is not only have the customer ID with the orders, but also the full name too. We want to get the full name from the other worksheet and bring it over here. And the way that we can make that connection is through the customer ID, because you're going to see the customer ID in both the sales and the customer worksheet. That's how we can figure out what the full name is for each customer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use VLOOKUP. Now what I want to do first is tell Excel how to identify the information in the other worksheet. The way to find it or to search for it is by using the customer ID. So that's my lookup value as it's called. And then I'll use a comma. And the table array is where to go and find that information. So I'm going to go over to the customer's worksheet and I'm going to select columns A through D. I'm going to select all of these because I want the customer ID that's what I'm referring to, and I want to pull out the full name. And now I'm going to go back to my formula up on top here, and I'm going to use a comma, and that column index number is going to look at this table array, so columns A through D in this worksheet, and I tell it, okay, go to this table array and pull out whatever's in the fourth column. So the customer ID is the first column in that table array, the first name is the second, the last name is the third, and the full name is the fourth column. And that's the information that I want to pull and put in the other worksheet. And so I'm going to put four here. And then when I finish out my VLOOKUP, in almost all cases, you're going to use false as your range lookup value to get an exact match, in almost all cases. So if I hit Enter, it's going to take me back to the sales worksheet. And it looks like it pulled up Lily Blackwell as the customer ID, or the customer, that matches this ID. Perfect. And the way to fill this out again, all the way down my worksheet, is to double click the bottom right corner and it drags it all the way down. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, these are all the same customer. Yeah, that's true because in these first 17 or 18 rows, it's all orders from the same customer. Well, I hope this was helpful. If you wanna learn more about VLOOKUPs, we've got a separate video on that. But if you want to learn more about adding, summarizing, and slicing up your data and summarizing it in different ways, I encourage you to check out our video on pivot tables. That's going to help you a lot with that.